This Women's History Month, Girls Inc. of Greater Atlanta is celebrating some of the best among us, the sheroes and change makers in our community, women who show us what it means to be strong, smart, and bold. This Women's History Month moment is brought to you by Synovus Bank. Hi, my name is Kennedy Mitchell, and I am so excited to highlight a woman who our 44th president, President Barack Obama, nominated to the federal bench. The Honorable Leslie Abrams Gardner is the United States District Court Judge for the Middle District of Georgia. Judge Gardner is the first female federal judge in the Middle District of Georgia, and is the first African-American woman to become an Article III judge in the state of Georgia. The Brown University and Yale Law School grad is extremely active in our community and is a member of the largest Black Greek organization, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Judge Gardner, welcome and happy Women's History Month. How are you? I am wonderful and happy Women's History Month to you. Thank you. Um, so why don't we go ahead and let's, let's just get started. Um, so what inspired you to become a judge? I have wanted to be a judge um, since I was a very little girl. My dad says um, that I was probably eight or nine, but I remember in elementary school, I wrote an essay about Thurgood Marshall, and I decided that I wanted to be the black, first black female Supreme Court justice. Um, and as I did the research, I also learned about Constance Baker Motley, who became the first black female federal judge, and I decided that's who I wanted to be. So at least at least as long as I can remember, this is the job that I wanted. So who inspired you when you were in school? When I was in school, I had a lot of teachers who inspired me. I have a lot of teachers who encouraged me. My English teachers and my history teachers, they encouraged me to learn about myself and to explore the world, to explore art and theater and just all the different wonderful things that I could be. And so Probably the people that inspired me the most were my teachers and my parents who also always told me that I could be anything that I could be if I just worked hard enough. Yes, I can definitely relate to that. You know, my parents and my teachers both have, you know, always been there for me since day one. Exactly. So have you ever defer a dream because you're a woman? No, I can proudly say that I have never deferred a dream. Now, there have been people who wanted to stop me because I was a woman, but my parents and especially my dad told me when I was a little girl, don't you let anyone tell you that there's anything you can't do because you're black or because you're a woman. And so sometimes, yes, I've had to work harder and I've had to shine a little bit brighter, but I have never deferred one of my dreams because I'm a woman. So I just have to ask this question, how was it, you know, going to such prestigious schools like Yale and Brown, especially as a black woman? So the schools I went to were wonderful. It was a very different world because I grew up in Atlanta and the schools that I went to were predominantly black. So when I got up to Brown, there were less than 6% of the student body was African-American. And so it was a different world. Most of the people from the Northeast, I think there was only maybe three or four of us that I knew that were from the South. So I was a Southerner, I was Black, um, and I didn't go to a private school. Most of the people who went to Brown in my class also went to private school. I went to public school. So it was a completely different world that I had to adjust to, but it also was a world of opportunity. I met people that I never would have gotten to meet. I had amazing professors. Every other day I look up and read something that one of my professors wrote or see one of my professors on television even now. And so while it was scary, and it was scary to be that far away from my family, probably, uh, Brown is in Rhode Island and I, my family was back in Mississippi. So to be that far away from my parents was hard, but it was definitely worth it. And it gave me so many opportunities, not just to study with amazing professors, but also to participate in programs and travel. When I was at Yale, for example, I got to go and study in East Africa for um, a semester, which was an amazing experience. So Brown and Yale, what they did for me more than anything else was opened up the world and made it so much bigger. If you could talk to your 11-year-old self, what would you say to her? I would tell 11-year-old Leslie to have fun. 
I remember when I was 11, I couldn't wait to grow up. Um, there were so many things I wanted to see and do. But now when I think back on those times, I had five brothers and sisters. So, you know, and getting to spend time with them, I see them now, but I didn't get to see them. I don't get to see them every day anymore. I had my parents there in the house. I didn't, I enjoyed them and we're a very close family, but I would tell 11 year old Leslie that life is there and you are going to do amazing things. And there are gonna be some hard times and you're gonna cry. And there are gonna be some people who are not so nice to you. And all that's gonna do is make you stronger. But I would tell her to enjoy who she is at 11, love who she is at 11 because every year that comes after that is just going to be a bigger and bigger blessing. Right, and I would definitely have to agree on you with that one. Um, you know, I think that those words could definitely apply to anyone really. And I think that we can all use those words in our lives. Thank you. So when was there a moment in your life where you had to be strong, smart, and bold? Probably the biggest moment was when I got the call from um, the White House, President Obama's office, to ask me if I would be willing to move to Albany, Georgia, in order to be a federal judge. Now, I told you I'd want to be the, I'd want it to be a federal judge all of my life, but I expected that it would happen wherever I was living. But an opportunity opened in Albany, Georgia, which is about three hours south of Atlanta. And I did not know anybody in Albany, Georgia. So I would have had to pick, I had to pick up my entire life and move down and learn about new people and make new friends. And some people said at that time that I was too young, that I didn't have enough experience, that I wouldn't make it through the process. And there were people, I had some haters. I'm not gonna lie. There were some people who were really not very positive and not very supportive. But I had to tell myself, Leslie, you've worked for this your whole life. You've trained for this. You've got the experience. You know what you're doing. And you need to reach up and grab it. You're not too young. You're not too inexperienced. You're ready for this. You can do it. And you need to go for it. And so when they asked me if I was willing to move and to reach for my dream job, I stood up. I was bold. I was brave. I was strong. And I went for it. Wow. And here I am. What is your advice to recover on a setback or a failure? I try to see every setback and a fa as a failure as an opportunity. Whenever something happens, I would say, take a moment. First of all, it's okay to feel bad about it. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to feel embarrassed. It's your emotions are given to you for a reason. So allow yourself a moment to feel what you feel and then let your brain kick in and say, what happened here? Is there something I could have done different? If there's something I could have done better. Next time I'm confronted with this, what will I do? And use that opportunity to say, okay, life goes on. Nothing has been destroyed. Nothing's been broken that can't be fixed. Do my best to repair it if I can, but make sure the next time it comes up, I'm ready. And I think that that's super important in life, just to make sure that you remember that, because, you know, sometimes when things don't always, you know, go as planned or things get hard sometimes, you know, you can't always give up. You need to keep on fighting, and that's super important. Exactly. Yes. Well, I just wanted to say thank you so much, Judge Gardner. Um, you are definitely you know, a big service um, in our community. And I just want to say, you know, you are indeed strong, smart, and bold. Thank you, Kennedy. And so are you. It is such a pleasure to meet you and to speak with you. And I cannot wait to see what you do to continue to change this world. Thank you so, so much. Girls Inc. of Greater Atlanta is able to provide great programming and resources because of our kind sponsors. This Women's History Month moment is made possible thanks to our friends at Zenobis Bank. Well done, Kennedy. Thank you for leading that amazing interview with Judge Gardner. We love supporting dynamic girls like you, especially during Women's History Month. Hi, everyone. My name is Chrissy Capri, and I work within Zenobis Bank's community banking team as a commercial banker. 
As a community bank, Synovus has the desire and the privilege to be able to support amazing organizations like Girls Inc. Because we share in the same belief that investing in and empowering young ladies today will produce the great leaders of tomorrow. Much like Girls Inc., Synovus was founded in the 1800s, 1888 to be exact. Our humble beginnings date back to a Georgia textile mill and a single act of kindness. One day, a worker's hard-earned savings spilled from the hem of her dress after it became entangled in a factory machine. Taking notice, an executive offered her a secure place to put her money in the company vault. He also offered to give her some interest for those monies. A service soon extended to all workers at the mill. Their deposits made the beginning of a company that would become Synovus. Here, 130 years later, Synovus is proud and privileged to be able to support companies within our community. We know that you matter, and we know that the support you get matters because here matters. We stand on that strong foundation today, knowing that the principles of good character, integrity, and supporting our communities in which we serve is valuable to all. We thank you today for tuning in, and we hope that you will stand with us in supporting this amazing organization that inspires all young girls to be smart, to be bold, and to be strong. To learn more about Girls Inc. of Greater Atlanta, check us out online.